Hey everyone and welcome back to another Warcraft lore video. This time it is spicy and it's probably foreshadowing the future of Lordaeron. The Scarlet Crusade, they are back and they are using a super modern technique to spread their new message fake news. That's right, now it's in your video game too. The Scarlets have been handing out these inflammatory pamphlets in the game to the good people of Lordaeron, and they have some pretty darn hefty claims, like say, Anduin and Sylvanas hooking up. But beyond their claims, these pamphlets serve a wider story function for Blizzard, right? This is their way of giving us a preface to stories that will be important as we're going into the future of Shadowlands and beyond. There is just so much lore to tease out of these, and I'm not just talking about a return of the Scarlets. No, I'm talking about the intense political drama that is poised to just explode in Lordaeron. And then just think, you know, the poor people of Lordaeron, they've got a hard time. They're stuck up there in Lordaeron. They've got Lordaeron, Netflix, and VPNs don't even exist in Azeroth, so they're kind of screwed. But the good news is you're not, because today's sponsor, NordVPN, is here. You will get 70% off at $3.49 a month and your first month free with my link. Why use a VPN, right? It's real simple. Do you want to watch content from another region, maybe US, UK, Netflix? Easy. Just hop onto Nord, use their 5,000 plus servers to choose choose your location, and you can use your internet as if you're in that other country. They also keep you private. Your ISP won't know what sites you use, so your ISP can't sell your browsing data to advertisers, nor can they prioritize some sites that you use over other ones. Now, Nord are also a Panama registered company, and that's important because it means your government can't actually get to them to get to you and breach your privacy. Their app and their browser extension are super easy to use, super convenient and quick, and you can get, as I said, 70% off and a free month at nordvpn.com forward slash Bellular Gaming. So, big thanks to them for supporting our content and our team in this time. And with that, let's get going. So just so that we're all caught up here, I'm just going to do a super quick recap on the Scarlets. Uh, after the Scourge of uh, Lordaeron, the various surviving factions, including the Silver Hand, joined forces to form the Scarlet Crusade, which was basically this kind of like last bastion of humanity in Lordaeron. Of course, those noble aims were quickly subverted when the dreadlord Balnazar then possessed the body of their Grand Crusader and basically drove them to the point of complete self-destructive madness. During Wrath of the Lich King, the Crusade essentially burnt through the majority of its manpower trying to assault Northrend, and then later on during Mists, adventurers slew their leader, Sally Whitemane, and were assured that with her death, the Scarlets would soon fizzle out. And then, of course, the final blow came in Legion when the Knights of the Ebonblade stormed the Scarlet Monastery, proclaiming that they would not leave until every Crusader had been slain. So it really did seem like they were gone, right? And there are more Scarlet stories to tell broadly, but for now, the point here is mostly that, yeah, we thought that they were all dead. Well, I mean, there still was that quartermaster who we found in the Dark Moon Fair, raising funds, and many of us wondered, well, what was that money actually being raised for? And now, it actually seems like we've got our answer. A print run. So to kick off, we'll take a look at these pamphlets that they printed out and see what sort of literature the Scarlets have been putting out into the world. The would-be queen sets the scene for the narrative that these pamphlets are trying to build. We all know that Terranus Menethil was the last true liege of Lordaeron. Yeah, of course. Start with a line that we can all agree with. Then we are introduced to the sympathetic character. Princess Kalia, the last living heir of King Taranis, and then finally we're introduced to the villain. Anduin Rin knew this. He feared such a challenge to his reign, so he set about to bring her down. Now, there is one event in particular that they are keen to misrepresent. The gathering in Arathai that intended, was intended, to reconcile forsaken and living families, but as we all know, that went south. Well, the Scarlets are actually presenting it as a conspiracy between Anduin and Sylvanas, so that Anduin could actually take Lordaeron for himself. It claims that Anduin had his banshee lover raise Kalia as a lich. 
Now, this is the power of subversive fake news. They show the villain both morally and physically corrupt the sympathetic character, Kalia, and then they start dropping in the negative associations like his banshee lover. The pamphlet ends with the authors revealing who they are and their grim mission. The Scarlet Brotherhood will not allow this to happen. We will bring down the traitor king and his undead puppet. With tears in our eyes, we will burn the corpse of Princess Kalia upon her ashes. Lordaeron will return to greatness. So, yes, the failed gathering apparently was an inside job by Anduin to remove his potential political rival, Kalia. With that established, what next? Pamphlet 2, The Cursed Old Wolf. The Scarlet Brotherhood have a clear mission, but there is one question. If the Brotherhood respects the right to succession, but not Kalia Menethil, then who would they actually propose to be king? Well, Gan Greymane, at least at first. Now, they do understand the inherent contradiction in their thinking here, but their second pamphlet states, for all his many flaws, Greymane hates the Forsaken. He wants the Banshee dead, his goals align with ours, and he has the forces to get the job done. The pamphlet then goes on, but do not worry, brothers and sisters, Greymane is not a long-term solution. So, they want to use Gen. They want to use his hatred in that rather Machiavellian fashion to actually achieve their aims. And as much as advertising that plan is probably a bad idea, it does tease what their long-term game is. So far, they've set the scene. Sylvanas is gone, Anduin is attempting to annex Lordaeron, and Gen is the Brotherhood's tool, with the last remaining Manithil, Kalia, no longer being fit for the throne. Now it's time for the most scandalous pamphlet. In the last Menethil, the Scarlet Brotherhood claimed that Kalia had a child with an Arathi nobleman and that he has been kept sheltered and safe all these years by members of the Scarlet Brotherhood. We have him in a secure location that must, for obvious reasons, remain secret. So yes, the Scarlets have essentially become this messianic cult with a chosen one who is hidden away somewhere. It of course makes everything more complicated that Kalia apparently had this daughter with someone from Arathi and that the child was taken by the father to be hidden. If there are pretenders to the throne who are not undead, well, that is just going to add another layer of painful complexity to this developing political storm in the region. I mean, imagine what happens if, when Anduin is trying to establish diplomatic ties with the new Forsaken via Kalia, we then have this last true living descendant of Tyrannus Menethil actually be unveiled. There is, though, even more. It's time for the most antagonistic and false pamphlet. In The Traitor King, they claim, you have heard stories that the so-called Forsaken were killed by the Banshee. False, there was no massacre, but Anduin wants you to believe there was. Yes, they are attempting to say that Anduin orchestrated the massacre at the gathering as shown in the Before the Storm novel, that is clearly an attempt to inflame both the living and the dead of Lordaeron against the King of Stormwind and ruin his plans. So, now that you and me are all fired up and scarlet lies, it seems that Anduin is actually a banshee-loving tyrant who orchestrated a false flag to take down his political rivals, but that there's actually hope in the form of a secret prince of Lordaeron laying in wait for, well, humanity to actually get rid of Anduin so that he can lead us to a better future. Sure. So, with all these scandalous pamphlets uh, now being canon, of course, what do us, us enraged player characters, actually have got to look forward to in the game? What are we going to do with all of this? Well, the pamphlet ends with a call to action. The Scarlet Brotherhood must bring an end to Anduin's puppet reign. Unite and rise up against his treachery. Okay, so let's take this one back to reality. Do I think that the Scarlet Brotherhood intend to kill Anduin Rin? Yes but not assassination. I think they've got a far more long-term, far more subtle plan, so let's dive into what I think the Scarlet Brotherhood are actually up to, what's really going on here. Now, when you think about a pamphlet, okay, the first thing that will come to mind to you or I is a restaurant, advertisement, or, you know, maybe a holiday destination, right? Something a bit cheesy like that. They've become a pretty trivial way of transferring information in our sort of modern society, but that's not always been the case, not whatsoever. 
Pamphlets were popularized in the 17th century as a way of spreading political and religious ideology. A wandering merchant known as a Chapman would actually travel the land selling pamphlets, and these pamphlets would have a huge effect on the public sphere. This is essentially what the Scarlets are trying to do with these pamphlets. And, you know, it's an era where people just sort of believe what they see printed. They're trying to influence the public sphere of Lordaeron to suit their own ends. They will influence the actions of the public by creating fabrications that are carefully layered over the commonly accepted truth, therefore creating a highly emotive version of that truth that people will feel compelled to act upon. That's kind of how propaganda stuff works. They are in effect creating another reality that people can participate in if they want to, and if their emotional needs make them want to, and if that reality, fake one, becomes the dominant narrative, then there's actually very little that Anduin can do to win the hearts and the minds of Lordaeron. But there are still so many questions. Who is the Scarlet's Chapman? Who's actually doing this? Who are the Brotherhood now, and what do they actually intend to do with this prince, right? These are all plot points that I think we're going to see developed, perhaps in Shadowlands, but certainly beyond. Blizzard, they very carefully, like clearly, put these in-game for us to discover them. Why? Obviously, to tease a future story. So, you know what, let's actually just take them up on that, and talk about what this future story could be. So on that, one of the looser ideas I've got is a connection between the Nathrezim and the Scarlet Brotherhood. I mean, think about it, right? A Dreadlord corrupted them in the past with the Grand Crusader, and then with, you know, Revendreth hosting Castle Nathreza, and there seemingly being Dreadlords hanging around, and it literally being vampires with Dreadlords being vampires. Yeah, there could be a, a bit more of a direct connection there. I've got to wonder if there's a character who's playing both sides. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, let's just say that Revendreth is just an area of the lore that I'll be paying very close attention to. But with that said, for now, let's return to the land that we do know, and that is Lordaeron. Lordaeron is shaping up to be one of the main theatres of lore outside of the actual Shadowlands, so a power vacuum has opened up in the wake of the Banshee Queen's exit. Calimanethil is next in line for the throne, but the Brotherhood are obviously discounting her here because she is undead. Now, Lillian Voss and Jaina are attempting to install Kali on the throne, whilst the broader Forsaken society may have different aims or maybe will be split in the issue of, you know, if this alliance person can really just march over and take him over. Of course, though, Lordaeron does extend beyond its capital. Arathai, well, that's obviously secured by the alliance, and the Forsaken's march will have been, you know, broken without Sylvanas leading the door open to Gilneas. Then we've got the Silver Hand who are back and, you know, are likely going to be the counterpoint to the Scarlet's propaganda. And then, you know, there's the Argents of the Argents, right? They're seemingly about to be swamped by the Scourge, given the Helm of Domination's destruction and what, of course, Tyranus actually warned would happen if that would happen. And then, I guess, speaking of the Unleashed Scourge, if you've been paying attention to the data mining, you'll know that a very important uh, old-school Scourge character is actually going to be back. So maybe he'll be revisiting his old, uh, his old haunt. But still, you the point here, right? The Alliance and the Horde are no longer at war. The Forsaken have a wild political situation, and the regions living, who we often do forget about, very much do exist. Cataclysm gave us a clear idea of their scale as well. You know, they had all these, you know, towns and stuff pop up. So with this new faction of Scarlets appearing, I think the powder keg is not ready to explode. But I do think, while it hasn't been lit, the fuse has been set. So there you go, it's been 20 years since the Scarlet Crusade was founded, and they were just such a cool faction in Classic when we first saw them. You know, we had this morally defined world where the light was used purely by the virtuous, but then we get to see these absolute, you know, mad lads dressed in red, all a bit more edgy, who were undeniably evil, but were really powerful practitioners of the light. It made the light more interesting, and they held this great sort of story position as an exception to the sort of light's underlying morality that we sort of thought it had. But, you know, the setting has changed. I think we can all agree that this idea of the light being moral has been thrown out of the door around the Legion era, and it does just bring up questions about what role this new Brotherhood will play. And considering that, I think it's no surprise that they are using different tactics with the propaganda, and I think there's no doubt that we'll see a Scarlet story like none that we've seen previously. And I guess taking that thought a little bit further, we might actually see a story play out in Lordaeron like never before. This region has essentially been a wasteland with a few extremely interesting factions fighting over scraps. But now, you know, the war is over, everyone is on their feet, there's no one dominant force to shape the region's future, 
which pretty much means it's all to play for. And I would expect a really good storyline in the region. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I would love to know, like, who do you think this prince is? Do you think the prince is actually going to, you know, actually appear in the game? Uh, will this be a novel or comic or a novella? Or will this actually be in-game content at some stage? Certainly, I would love nothing more than for a little bit of fresh paint to be thrown on the region and then maybe some cool patch content or something going on in Lord Run. I think that would be uh, undeniably cool. So let me know what you think. Thank you for watching this video. And with that, I'll see you next time. Thank you.